This is Africa's second largest land carnivore. It's probably the most feared and fearless of its scavengers, and the best known, the hyena. This spotted predator is most famous for its spooky calls and manic cackles. It's the animal that's been linked for centuries with Africa's witches and wizards, a cruncher of bones, not quite dog, not quite cat. It's Africa's arch opportunist. There was once a time when food was scarce. All the animals gathered anxiously together. They didn't know what to do. So they decided to ask their king, the lion. The lion said that Ngai of the Great Sky was punishing them for ingratitude. If they thanked him before each meal, they'd have food in plenty. But Hyena scoffed at this. On his way home, he saw an impala. His mouth watered. Ignoring the king's words, he pursued it without a thought for Ngai. But Ngai saw. He made the impala swift and strong. She raced ahead of insolent hyena, led him on a wild goose chase until he was quite worn out. King Lion was furious at hyena's stupidity, but that made no difference to hyena. He hunted on regardless, and in the morning, ravenous and exhausted, he was forced to rest. On looking round, he noticed that all the animals who remembered to thank Ngai grew fatter and fatter. The zebra certainly did, and the buffalo, and all the antelopes, small and large. But he just grew hungrier and leaner with every day. Perhaps, he thought, he should do like them, thank Ngai. So now when you hear hyena call in the night, you know he's thanking Ngai before he has his meal. The spotted hyena of that story is the animal everyone knows. But there are others. The brown hyena resembles a long-haired rug on four legs. It has the hyena's typically dog-like face and its sense of smell and hearing are also as well developed as a dog's. Its mane is like a bushy collar. The brown hyena can fluff it out aggressively, make itself look almost twice as big as it really is. It can do the same with its shaggy coat. Like the rest of its family, the brown hyena has a short, thick, bushy tail it can also fan out. It's an expressive part of its anatomy. The shyest family member is the rare Artwolf, twice the size of a fox, a strange carnivore which eats nothing but termites. Its long pink tongue can lap up a quarter of a million a night. Even though termites are soft and squishy, the Artwolf still has typical hyena canines and a typical strong hyena stomach which easily neutralizes the chemicals in its prey. Ears like radar dishes pick up the minute noises termites make, ones completely inaudible to humans. Just like its prey, an artwolf lives underground. The spotted hyena is anything but a loner. It's clannish, noisy, and outgoing. An adult can weigh as much as a grown man and stand nearly a meter at the shoulder. 
spotted hyenas are built at an angle with sloping shoulders and low-slung hindquarters. Their wide skulls anchor super strong throat and jaw muscles, which power one of the world's mightiest bites. It has a phenomenal crushing pressure of 800 kilos per square centimeter. A hyena's spottiness is its ID tag. Every animal's pattern is different, unique as a human fingerprint, but harder to define since spots fade with age. A hunter scavenger's life has given the hyena acute senses, so keen they can tell something's wrong with an animal that looks fine to us. This yearling's senses are still being honed. Its thick, shaggy coat, too. That will thin out and get shorter as it gets older. A young cub's furry uniform is almost black, only a few weeks old, yet already getting into the swing of adult life. Early learning includes knowing how to behave around adults and how to tell which is which. Their mother, like all females, has a remarkable external sex organ that resembles a male's. A hyena has such acute senses, it can pinpoint disturbance in a distant wildebeest herd, one a human couldn't even see, let alone hear. Satellite dish ears that may help heat loss can capture distant hyena calls well outside the human range. And here are the weapons of an expert killer and scavenger. The teeth that can split an elephant's bones and rip skin and flesh like silk. As they evolved, hyena front legs grew longer and longer to be able to eat up the miles at a steady lope. A thick, bushy tail is a vital part of the vocabulary of body language, put to daily use, especially at mealtimes. Hyenas are great opportunists. They often shadow other meat eaters to steal a kill or wait for scraps. Panic in the ranks, but the hyena's not to blame. And now the hyena starts to tail the leopard, for even a leopard can be scared into dropping its kill. But not this time. All is not lost. Pieces of meat may yet fall down. It's worth a stake out under the tree. After dark, the leopard sleeps off its meal. The hyena has not given up, though. A successful stakeout takes time and patience. A hungry colleague has doubled the watch.
but there's not a scrap left. The leopard's eaten the lot. Time to shadow another killer. Or kill for itself. A hyena scavenges some 40% of its food, but kills more than it scavenges. Here is a hyena's worst nightmare. Male lions are the most dangerous, yet they provide a hyena with many a meal. The lions are being unusually tolerant. Normally, they'd react aggressively. They may be too full to move. But their proximity makes the hyenas edgy. They will gobble their food even faster than usual. There's plenty of meat left, and bones, good hyena food. Yet crunching bones does nothing for a hyena's teeth in the long term. At just three years old, they'll be as worn as a lion's twice its age. Spotted hyenas seem to have cast iron stomachs. They can process meat, bone, hoof, horn, and hide. Hair they usually throw back up again. Its nutritional value is virtually nil. If anything could get blood from a stone, a hyena could. Its acid bath stomach can squeeze nutrients from anything fresh or rotten, even a dried up, long dead corpse. This female has eaten well, but she's taken away a snack for later. She's suckling young and needs maximum energy intake to make milk. She's not about to hand her loot to some scrawny bird. They can dive bomb all they like. She won't be scared off. But then, for no apparent reason, she does abandon it. Thirst has got the better of her. And of course, goodbye loot. That's life in a world of opportunists. Win some, lose some. Sometimes, hyena enemy number one is the loser. A solitary lioness doesn't have the brawn to defend her kill against the clan. To state ownership of the kill, she marks the ground at a safe distance. However, this is a total waste of time. They hardly even look at her. Some hyenas are off to chew their buffalo joints in private. One has selected a particularly large takeaway. It looks as if he wants to wash it down with a drink, but in fact, hyenas sometimes do this if they want to save a piece for later. Stashing a large trophy underwater is an effective way of hiding it. Though he may be pressing his luck with wild dogs for an audience,
Hyenas are speed eaters. Together, a clan makes short work of a whole carcass. Twenty hyenas can eat a young wildebeest heavier than a man in 10 minutes flat. 30 can demolish a zebra three times that weight in 15. Hyenas are prepared to share a large carcass with other scavengers, but not morsels few animals would bother touching. The lioness is still skirting the action. if she could just pick off her thieving enemies one by one. But no sooner has one made itself scarce than another pops up to take its place. And all the while, her kill is steadily being whittled away. She takes out her frustration on an easier target. Here's a chance to cater for more than one need. The lioness watches her kill melt away like snow in the sun. There are still too many for her to take on. What can't be eaten on the spot can easily be trucked away by a weightlifter that can tackle parts other animals won't touch, even old bones. Spotted hyenas are clan animals. A clan may have as few as five or as many as 80 members, though not all 80 are together at the same time. Its structure is most unusual. It's dominated by the females, one of whom rules the roost, but all of whom rank higher than all the males. At playtime, barriers of rank may be lowered. Unless obviously lactating or pregnant, it can be hard to tell which is male and which is female, partly because they're much the same size. But also because females have a clitoris so long it looks just like a penis. Could this cross-dressing possibly be confusing to the hyenas? If it is, a quick sniff of the genitals provides an instant answer. And it's the safer end to check out. The other has teeth. This is how hyenas assess rank and how they cement their clan bond. Lengthy sniffing sessions follow each hunt or separation. But one hyena unsure who the other is might face it first with fangs. Female spotted hyenas can pay a high price for ruling the roost and for their strange sexual apparatus.
This pregnant female is burdened by her internal cargo of perhaps two cubs. It's almost time for their birth, and this is where her masculinity may be her downfall. Most babies have a relatively smooth passage into the world, not hyena cubs, because their mother has no vaginal opening for them to slip through. Instead, the base of her clitoris tears and they emerge through a gaping wound if they first manage to get around the 90 degree bend in her birth canal. Giving birth can be fatal for both. This mother has survived her ordeal. She and her cubs are flourishing. She's off to eat, to top up her milk tanks. In some parts of Africa, hyena mothers give birth in private. In others, they use a communal den. But once they're a few weeks old, cubs everywhere live in the same communal den. On open grass plains, a cub is visible to enemies the moment it pokes its head out of doors. So it's good to have adult bodyguards checking in from time to time. Hyenas look after their young and appear to have strong bonds of affection. It hardly fits the usual view of this animal. Males do their share of caring as well. It may be polite to bob and bow in hyena society too, although this is how cubs show excitement and playfulness. There could be a touch of nervousness to this bobbing head. The cub wants to get past to its mother and milk. Her milk is incredibly rich. A cub can last on it a week if she's off finding food. And if they live in the Serengeti, she may trek well over 3,000 kilometers a year to do that. All those bones she's eaten load her milk with calcium. It has more proteins than the milk of any other land carnivore and is full of fats and nutrients. Her cubs may suckle for up to 18 months. That's a long time. All in all, she invests an enormous amount of energy in her young, more than almost any other carnivore. A female is gentle with her cubs, but can be very aggressive to adults. All that testosterone in the system, perhaps. Amazingly, the lead female has levels close to those of a male. so she can easily dominate the clan and claim the privileges of her rank, like taking the lion's share of a kill. That helps her milk production and therefore her cubs. Her cubs are privileged too. By birth, they're higher up the ladder than other females' cubs, higher even than some adults. Bonds between mother and daughters last for life, as daughters stay in the clan, but sons have to go and find a life elsewhere. Time to do some housework, sweep out the communal den. but there's plenty of time off to just sit around and relax. Until the cubs are old enough to get their own food, it's still someone else's problem to keep it coming. When several females are lactating at the same time, 
there may be intense infighting over food. As their testosterone levels have risen over time, females have turned increasingly aggressive. This has led inexorably to their dominating the group, to their male mimic genitalia, and their difficulties giving birth. Spotted hyena females may be in a class of their own in the animal world. This cub was born in a highly unusual and unorthodox manner. It's probably lucky to have reached the outside world at all. Female bat-eared foxes, like most female animals everywhere, don't experience a spotted hyena's birthing traumas. It suggests female hyena genitalia have acquired their unusual shape relatively recently in evolutionary terms. Maybe in the distant future, females will be even more male than the males. And for a cub, entering the world will be even more challenging. In the meantime, these clan members have only one short-term problem, keeping a cool bottom. Many people think hyenas are related to dogs. They might look a little like them, but they're rather closer to cats. Along with genets and civets, they and the cats branched off from a larger carnivore family. That split happened about 55 million years ago. Like hyenas, genets still share some of their characteristics with their distant cat cousins. As if they couldn't decide which way to jump, the early hyenas lived in hunting packs and behaved more like dogs. Those first hyenas filled the niche that jackals and wild dogs fill today. And they were hunters, not scavengers. Some of the smaller early hyenas were physically like modern jackals. They probably had a similar lifestyle and went round in pairs, not in groups, like hyenas today. Wild dogs are often thought to be part of the hyena family. They're not. They're 100% dog. In those early times, big cats were numerous. Their killing fields were littered with the uneaten bones of their prey. This left a gap for something that could eat bones. It's believed hyenas evolved to fill the niche. Thirty-eight thousand spotted hyenas inhabit Africa's wild places. The greatest population is in the Serengeti ecosystem. Part of this is the Ngorogoro crater, a long dead volcano that holds vast herds of grazing animals in its lush green bowl. The hyenas that live off them form the largest groups of carnivores anywhere in the world. Here, there's so much food, females raise bigger litters than outside the crater's rim.
spotted hyenas can live in almost any African habitat, except rainforests. But the crater is the best, even with intense competition from an army of other carnivores and other hyenas. A dead elephant. It may have died of natural causes. Now it's scavenger food, enough for an entire hyena clan, one of the many food perks enjoyed by crater hyenas. By contrast, Namibia wouldn't seem to offer many perks. It looks empty definitely an animal-free zone. And though life in Namibia's Itosha can be challenging in the extreme, there are precious water holes and animals. Here a hyena can slake its thirst, fill its stomach. So can something as large as a giraffe. In the heat of midday, life slows right down. A little drink, a little necking. General relaxation all round. The predators are not in hunting mode. For of course, there are predators. When they're open for business, lions mean trouble all round. It pays a hyena to be alert. Both these hyenas are aware of how close their enemy is. This one's had enough. She seems to sense impending trouble. She's off. The other hyena is hot and thirsty enough to risk a quick dip. But this is a possible hot spot, right in the line of fire. Living near lions is always a juggling act for hyenas. The danger factor may outweigh the benefit of free meals. No danger this time. The lion drew a blank. Not a free meal in sight for any hyena. sunrise in the Matusa Donna in Zimbabwe, and the elephants are on the move. The hyenas are on the move too, returning from a night's hunt. 
some well-fed lions prepare to shut down for the day. No tension in this encounter. It's a temporary dawn truce. This part of Zimbabwe is rich in wildlife of all kinds. It's a great place for a hyena to set up home, raise a family. A good home is good for years. This cub has probably inherited its great-great-grandmother's den, which has an interesting view of the local waterhole. It's a fine place to watch the neighbors, see what they get up to, who might or might not be edible, for future reference. But even the best home is evacuated from time to time. Hyenas regularly up sticks and go, mostly for security reasons, but also because the booming bug population bites too much for comfort. Distinctive hyena calls fill the dying African night. In the early light, a solitary hyena whoops to its distant clan. A whoop can carry seven kilometers, like a shout reaching from the top of the Empire State Building further than Central Park. Clan members squeal as they squabble. A squeal is one of a range of 14 different hyena calls. Hyena body language is also distinctive stuff. When meeting friend or relative, a hyena presents its backside. Ritual sniffing of genitalia is an important clan ceremony, a way of sharing a bond, and it seems to excite and arouse. To roll over and put vulnerable zones within easy biting range signals submission and a degree of trust, perhaps. There's no lower age limit to the ceremony. Just four weeks old and tucking their tails under submissively, as dogs do. A hyena's tail is very vocal, depending on how it's held. A raised tail speaks of dominance and aggression. It's the same language a dog's tail speaks.
The strange, slightly manic giggling at greeting ceremonies is a signal of submission. And when a high-ranking hyena yawns and shows its weaponry, it's indicating superiority. Every hyena produces a strong-smelling paste in a well-developed anal gland. It turns this gland inside out and smears a distinctive scent trail on grasses. This rings a territory with an unmistakable odour. Even heavy rain won't wash away all trace of pungent scent. The scent message may be underlined by paw marking. Every single clan member respects the pecking order, especially at mealtimes. Fresh from a mud bath, this hyena is careful to observe the proper ritual. Around even a well-chewed and ancient corpse, high rank takes precedence. Here, the full range of hyena communication skills may be deployed. This female has decided to monopolize the skeleton. She's elbowed out the rest but that's merely left the door open for other competitors. It was easier to get the message across to her own kind, who after all speak her language. Hyena's strange slouch comes of having longer front legs than back and a sloping spine. This makes it the marathon runner of the animal world. Prey animals that don't put on a good burst of speed when the chase starts will never outrun it over distance. That casual lope is very deceptive. The marathon runner can keep it up for miles and for hours. Even water won't stop it once it's got the wind up. It can canter like this until its prey is exhausted. But this is the one that got away. Lechues are more at home in water than hyenas are. Not that a hyena exactly feels out of place here.
the spotted hyenas of Botswana's Okavango have proved that their species can take to water with ease. One solitary male lion, one carcass, several hyenas, equals a tense situation. Hyenas have the numbers, but the lion the size. Fangs stripping a zebra's skull could easily strip a hyena's, so why don't they leave? Because they have been the victims of theft. It's their kill in the lion's jaws. Lions steal more often from hyenas than the reverse. <laughs> they might possibly be considering a counterattack, but not for long. what can easily happen when a hyena gets it wrong. A salutary lesson for others. Don't run risks with the chief foe. A solitary hyena carrying food can invite trouble. A pack of wild dogs has picked up the scent of meat. A hyena is about twice as large as a wild dog and much stronger. On a one-to-one -one basis, it wins hands down. But now it has the odds against it. It's right to look over its shoulder. This united front is strong and dangerous. Every dog has his day, and this is not the hyenas. Today, the tables were turned. Usually, hyenas hound dogs and steal their food, and dogs almost always avoid them. Ruthless monster? or yet another misunderstood carnivore that's had a bad press. Perhaps a hyena's only fault is to have a face and habits not everyone likes. Like everything else, hyenas are just trying to make a living. If they're linked with the supernatural, maybe it's because they're out at night whooping it up with eerie spine-tingling cackles. But Africa, without this familiar animal we seem to love to hate, would not be the same. I 